I love the kettlebell pullover for that anterior core activation, really teaching the shoulder girdle how to control anything above head. And then also in that supine position, it's just such a great way to really help the pelvic floor understand where it is in relation to the body. So Brett right here is just showing that eccentric control of the weight going down, breathing well in the nose, out the mouth. We want the work to be here, here. We do not want the work to be in the neck. So here and here, you feel that right here? And good strong breath to come in. Whether it's reps or time, you're gonna be challenged that core and control. The kettlebell pullover. Ah, the kettlebell hot potato. One of my favorite dynamic warm-ups using a light kettlebell. We've got only 8K here, you can go four, 6K. The handle's upside down. All I'm doing is throwing that weight side to side. The skinnier the stance is here, the harder this is. But I do this for time or reps and just really get the body temperature up. Feel the core catching, not just the shoulders. And if you really wanna go throw wide, it gets even harder. That's that wide, he's gotta accommodate that. Hey, Brett's working hard right now and we'll just switch sides too. Great job, buddy. This is the kettlebell halo, all right? Holding the kettlebell firmly, we've got an 8K. And let's not use thumb control, not thumbs through the hole. So he's holding the horns, Brett's holding the horns. He just, every time he resets right here and then just draws a halo around his head using this kettlebell. I want the kettlebell to move around the head and I don't want that head to move at all, all right? A lot of times you'll see people ducking under the kettlebell. Please, that's what we're cueing against. We want the shoulder blades to get back there as that's what engages the core and the hips the right way. We are driving the movement of this weight to help the movement in the shoulders and the hips. The kettlebell halo. Guys, I have the kettlebell here. I'm using 16K for just a basic floor press, right? This is a great way to help people who aren't well into their push-ups yet, who don't really understand how to push firmly, okay? They use the ground as a way to help their body understand what straight is in the press. I've got 16K, he's going from ceiling to sternum. One of the things that I can do to advance this is to elevate the legs, uh-huh. So he can be here in the dead buck position. He can even go straighter, and now he's got that hollow body hold also. Another way to lighten this up for my throwers and my rotational athletes, I give them a little twist of the upper lower body as they press through in that rotation. So now I've got my athletes who have to learn how to drive in that rotational space. Let's go drop over that way. Notice when the legs drop, he actually wants to press in that rotation. The floor press with the kettlebell. What a great way to teach your clients how to press with good form. All right, the push press, the kettlebell push press can also be done with two kettlebells. It's gonna be a lot harder than that single kettlebell because each arm has to individually hold the kettlebell. Now, I've got the rack position. He's held the rack position. He's rolling back down into his press. First things first, to establish control here, all right? If the arms are shaky, you're not going anywhere forward. So do you have control? Yes. That's my guy. Notice the forearms are vertical. He's gonna push vertically, hey, straight up. Why do I love the kettlebell? Because you can see the kettlebell's weighted on the outside. So in a way, you can actually almost feel the kind of fly action that chest and pec works with the shoulder girdle. It's one of the reasons why we love this kind of press. Another new one I can do to make this harder is just to hold one arm still while I press one arm and I go in an alternating form. I can also nuance this by changing one weight. This could be lighter, this could be heavier, but creating that symmetry is gonna create that demand in the core. I can also get the legs off the air, off the ground, into this double press. I can also do the same thing. I can twist him over to the left or right, just like we did in that single arm press. All of it is great. My boy's strong. Have some fun out there, guys, with either reps or time. Guys, kettlebell goblet squats or horn hold squats, all right? The position. First things first, you gotta have control up top. Can you hold this kettlebell with control? You got it? So he can control it here. That's where I wanna start it. I want that engagement, so elbows a little bit up just to feel the shoulders and abs. You feel that already? Oh, once it's on, he can get down to that squat for that depth, control, hold, and then press through the floor to get back on top of it. 
This is very basic here. This is a gobset of notes that is holding the bell. I can also have him hold the horns. It's gonna create a different feeling on that, but no matter what, don't let that weight drop as you squat. Great job, buddy. We can do some pulses in here. We can do some pulses on the bottom, or maybe we wanna do some step with the squats. There's different things to do, different nuances to do with the load. All right, another thing I can do is I can rack this on one side. So this is a single arm rack with this squat. Beautiful. Again, be mindful of the symmetry and position. The weight on this end doesn't want your squat to go sinking down. It's about the uprightness, okay? Even it out. I'm sure you'll see a lot of variations as you go through. I can do a squat. I can maybe add a press here if I like. There's lots of ways to play around with this, but ultimately the goal is that squat. Kettlebells are great for RDLs, okay? RDLs, Romanian deadlift. Um, we're gonna go some single leg RDLs here, so pick a leg and just show it off, Nicole. This is a hinge exercise, so these are all the things that you'll see your clients do. They'll start to wobble, start to fall. If you have a client that's having trouble with balance, it's okay to put the right foot down in the very beginning. So notice what you're trying to coach is that hip slide. Does the left leg and hip know how to slide back? And as she learns this motion, right, straight down, straight up, then she can remove the leg. That's gonna go up, and then our beautiful, push all the way through the floor, all the way to that stand, cool. Very nice. I can add nuance, I can make this harder, I can go heavier with the load, I can make it single arm, maybe just hold it for one arm, with one arm. This is an opposite arm, opposite leg RDL. So notice it's a contralateral hold. It's more twisting and, and core rotation happening here. I can even hold the bottom position and show me a row in that RDL. So go like that and then show me a row down there. Yep, and stand up with it. Lots of ways to compound this single leg RDL with a kettlebell. Great job. You wanna see another one? Put your foot all the way back on that wall. The right foot, boom. Yeah, you do. Lots of, my, lots of my people who have trouble RDLing, if you put one leg on the wall, create some stability, go into your hinge here, and then now go into your RDL. Great way to create another nuance to help your clients who have trouble with that stability. But no matter what, this exercise, fantastic for just overall posture, but so much for the hips. Great job, Nicole. One of my favorite core exercises for the body and great tempo for the shoulder is just a single arm overhead press, all right? We've chosen bottom ups here, bottoms up with the kettlebell because this teaches that uprightness of the forearm and girdle, right? And nothing can fall. So pressing all the way up and exhale slowly down. Find this position where it's holding and back up and back down. So at the bottom position here, you really should feel the shoulder working. Feel that shoulder working? And that's make that U-turn. Good, and back down. Excellent. Making it harder, all I have to do is take this hand away or make that kettlebell heavier. Good. Single arm, overhead press. One of the best shoulder presses is just using a kettlebell, all right? Two kettlebell, two, uh, two hand kettlebell overhead press just to teach the tempo of vertical push. Here we go. Nice finish, Nicole. I have Nicole finish with her ears in front of the arms. Hold strong, breathe. She's gonna have to figure out where her hips belong. A lot of times you don't want those people pressing in their hips back here. You need to be stacked. Go ahead. I can, I can make this harder by either, you know, making the kettlebell heavier. I can skinny her feet out. Go ahead and make the feet skinnier. Uh-huh, same thing. Or maybe I can even do the single leg. Let's keep that leg up now. Yeah, right here. Yep. Wow, what great core control, huh? Let's see the other side. Let's see if she has it. Mm -hmm. You can put your foot right on my hand. Mm -hmm. And then when you've got control, just lift it off my hands. Great posture and control, great girdle strength. What an excellent exercise. The kettlebell overhead press with a single leg. 
Kettlebell pull-throughs or kettlebell moves, you know, while holding a position is a great way to really liven up rotational control. So let's just go into a bear crawl position. Love it. So she's already going to that. So let's start with the knees down. Nicole, it's all good. And then just moving that kettlebell from left to right. Yes, nice and slow. Slow, slow. The slow pull, make sure that arm has to push to get this kettlebell across. I don't want this to be a neck exercise. I definitely want this to be a core exercise. Excellent. To make it harder, I can in, in, in make that kettlebell heavier or I can just have her elevate her knees. Right there. So she's got to maintain that postural control. Nothing else moves except that kettlebell slowly. Nice work, Nicole. Great core control, great way to not rotate all the way over. Hips, everything looks good. Beautiful work. We gotta love Russian twists with the kettlebell. Why? Keeps you tight. So big chest, pull the handles apart, right back to that V sit, dig the heels in the ground, squeeze knees. Once you find your V, all you're doing is just give me a little bit of that rotation to the side. Beautiful. Kettlebell Russian twist, gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, core control, breathe well, don't lose your tall. What an excellent way to produce rotational strength and control. Rest, great job. The straight arm sit up using the light kettlebell is a great way to really help the body understand tempo in that flexion move, okay? So there shouldn't be any yanking or jerking to get up. So what I want to do is a strong, firm arm, no bent wrist, strong and firm. You got that, Nicole? Now, I don't want this arm pointing anywhere else except the ceiling. Okay, I want it to go straight up the ceiling. So go ahead and show it to me. Beautiful. Take your time to do these, all right? Slow on the way down and control on the way up. Notice how she's using the tension of her legs to help bring that up, right? You may even see the legs come up off the ground a little bit. That's okay as long as the tension's heavy in the back. That's a counterweight happening. Notice how she finishes with her ear in front of the arm. Huge important. That's that full range of motion that you're accentuating. You got another one in you? Yeah, oh, she's getting tired though. And slowly down. Great job, Nicole. The single arm sit up using the kettlebell. Kettlebell loaded carries are a great way to engage the entire body to really just turn on everything, all right? So go ahead and pick those weights up. What makes this such a great core engagement is the load, all right? Now getting the shoulders back, feel the shoulders, feel where they belong, all right? A lot of people who slouch, when they feel back here, they're gonna feel all that weight along their skeleton now. Yeah, you feel that on your spine? That's right. So from the get-go, I can just start just doing some marching. It doesn't have to move. Just show me some marching. Load, it carries marching, all right? Right from there, this is already gonna, she's showing us what she's gonna be doing in her walk. Yeah, feel those legs on and walk on back. You can choose distance, you can choose time. Um, we have a short room here, but you can let your clients go for quarter mile, mile, however you want to do the work, all right? Um, this is a, a, a farmer's walk. If I only do it in one hand, that's called a suitcase carry. So go ahead, and this is a suitcase carry. Now, when you're doing the suitcase carry, you really want to be it. So I always instruct my clients, pretend like you're carrying a ghost kettlebell. Feel that symmetry? We want the legs to be doing the same work even though only the weight is on one side. Great job, Nicole. Another variation of a loaded carry. Let's put that one down. And let's go ahead and show them a rack walk. So a rack walk is just holding the two kettlebells just like this in a shoulder rack. Girdle is strong, feel that uprightness. Posture is good. I can start them again with that march in place just to make sure they've got good balance, good tempo. Once they have it, you got control, yep. go ahead and walk it on out. And this is a rack walk. Now I can do change this again and make it even heavier. I'm going to get one kettlebell. This is a single arm rack walk. So again, that's going to create a little bit of a rotation. She's gonna hold a ghost kettlebell on the other side. Feel one side working a little harder now, trying to hold that weight, yep. 
And lastly, let's see a waiter walk. Waiter walk because we're pretending that the load is a plate of food above your head. So just hold that arm straight behind your ear, Nicole. Let's go with some height. Notice how her, knee, her knees stopped going up. Let's go, let's help her get those knees up and engage that core even more. You feel that difference? Yep. Heck yeah. <laughs> and this would be the rack walk using the kettlebell. Loaded carries, fantastic for core engagement, static shoulders, dynamic hips, overall great athletic work. The kettlebell is great for hinge exercises. Number one is just a regular deadlift, all right? So putting the kettlebell between the feet, the basic deadlift is just about getting the hips back and then driving through the floor to stand. You can go slower than that even. Just put it right behind your heels for me, D. Very job being up. Beautiful. Notice the hinge of the hips. The hips go back, kettlebell behind, the chest falls, and he's dropping into this. Now, if he starts to speed this deadlift up a little bit, this turns into what is known as the kettlebell swing, right? So that's a deadlift, not a squat, meaning his hips are sliding back as he pops. Great job letting that chest, great job. So again, the kettlebell swing, accentuating the hips and explosion through to propel the weight forward. Great job, B. Great power exercise, great job for cardio, all, all the stuff. All the stuff. Nice. Building off of the single arm swing can bring us into the single arm clean. So go ahead and initiate the swing, but then finish with that catch. Very nice. Good. Square up to the camera so they can see what we're looking at here. Brett. Notice how his hips are square. Notice how the, sh the, the clean comes up and he squares up his shoulders. Beautiful. You can see that little bit of rotation in this clean. And switch up the other side. Fantastic, buddy. Now don't, so when our clients get a little bit floppy, just remind them, this is a vertical pull, pulling up the body. Zip up, yeah! That'll get rid of that flop. Great job, Brett. Coachable and everything. The single arm kettlebell clean. One of the most advanced single arm swings is the single arm kettlebell snatch. Let's go ahead and show it off. Good hip hike all the way up to the sky. Now he's going to have to get, drive the hips and get the weight up as high as he can and flip his hand and his punch into that kettlebell. Boom! Great job. Display control at the top. Nice work, B. Lots of explosion. Come on, show me. That's it. Explosion, power, technique, all inside the kettlebell snatch. Kettlebell windmills are great not only for shoulder girdle control, but really to help teach how to hip slide the hips and keep your core activated, all right? If, I, if my kettlebell's over here in the right hand, when I'm holding the kettlebell low, I'm gonna point the toes to the right as well. From here, arm, naked arms goes up into the air. Keep your eyes on that, okay? And slide your hips towards me as you put the kettlebell on the ground. Now, Brett's showing me, pause here. In order to do this, he had to slide his hips and rotate through his T-spine and he'll stand back up, and it's gonna show a tempo and rotation. So back down again, slide of the hips, putting that between the legs, and standing right back up. Now this is the base of the kettlebell windmill. If I wanna make it more advanced, I could take that kettlebell and put it in this hand instead. So now, Brett's gonna reach for the ground with the naked hand as he stretches his hip towards and see me and slide into that press. Great job. Great job controlling that girdle. Great job controlling the hips. Make sure you do both sides for either time or reps and have some fun with this one. Kettlebells are a great way to add resistance for hip bridges, all right? I get a pad, something to put in front of the hips. Feet are close enough to the hips. You got it? Yep. Nice work. And right in the middle, in the very beginning, all right? My clients just hold there. Why do I cue this this way? Because he has to press his core into the bell, all right? You feel that rigid? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So he's already pre-engaged because of the weight of the bell. Now he's gonna go ahead and bridge, hold up, and just show me that control up and down. Because of the way this weight is driving, he can feel straight up and straight down with his hips, and I wanna cue that. Push the weight straight up and down. Don't let it go back this way to your head. You're not trying to throw the kettlebell onto your face. 
and that helps add more action in the glute. Another thing you can do is raise the toes. Beautiful work. Now one slight progression to this, and what I like, go ahead and relax for me, B, is go ahead and move the pad over to just one hip. Now I'm going to load his right hip only, and now I'm just going to be very light on this left leg, very little. I'm just going to put the heel where his toe used to be, but do most of the work here in your right leg. Very nice. Very little on this left leg. This is a single leg hip bridge, really. Even though he's very light here, it's really teaching this hip the control. Again, use the feedback of the weight to help understand control at that hip. You like that? That's good. Yeah. Can you do your weight leg in the air? Can you show me this? Bend it? Yeah. Uh huh? Right there's one. Right there. Oh, he does have it. Even hips, single leg. What a great thing here. My boy's got it. Strong.